Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm gonna um, make over a few items in a shabby chic style. So I did some birdhouses and um, was making a vignette to go with them, and this uh, one is gonna go with the shabby chic birdhouse. And I'm first putting a coat of slick stick on this to help the paint stick. It's a product by Dixie Bell that helps uh, paint stick to slick surfaces, so I, I like to use it on glass. And after I put that on and let it dry, now I'm doing two coats of the color Buttercream. And that's also a Dixie Bell color. And again, I'm gonna be decoupaging this napkin uh, on on the bottle, just kind of randomly here and there. I'm gonna tear out pieces of this uh, once I separate the layers. Uh, there was actually three layers to this napkin, so I removed two of them. And then I'm just gonna tear out some of the individual flowers and uh, put them on with some Mod Podge. And I'm starting out by um, gluing on a, a cluster of these flowers and then I'll just randomly place some of the others. Now this is a reminder of what the birdhouse looked like that I'm doing this vignette around. I had a couple of very sweet visitors come today and uh, one was on the 127 yard sale which I've never gotten to go on but uh, they made a stop on the way back and uh and the other one uh had a um a big church function to go to and stopped on the way but i'm just so grateful uh to uh, receive your visits and get to know some of you and um i just want you know to know how very much i appreciate both of you taking time out of your day now I'm using the Glossy Finish Mod Podge because a friend of mine gave me a couple of these and I wanted to use them up. Uh, but I don't worry much about the Glossy Finish because when I'm all finished, I'm gonna spray this with a clear coat anyway and that will remove any Glossy Finish. Because what it will do is when you're, um, when you are, uh, finishing it off with a clear coat you will uh, whatever finish that your clear coat has is what you will replace the original finish with so if it's glossy then you'll tone it down uh, or if it's flat then whatever finish that you're putting on obviously it's going to have that now what i've done is mixed about half and half of baking soda in my in my paint and uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to add some texture. But I didn't want to add the texture before I did my decoupage. So uh, I'm just kind of tapping on some texture around all of those, um, of those decoupage areas. And any of the, uh, the torn edge around your um, image you'll be able to kind of hide that anyway with this. It doesn't show up much, but what little bit does show up, you'll be able to hide it when you're tapping this on. Also received a couple of hang tags that I'll add at the end of this video. And these are not the new Christmas hang tags that I mentioned in my last couple of videos. These are just some regular hang tags that I can put on my hang tag wall. So now I'm adding some vintage lace around the bottom. And I love this, this lace. I think a viewer sent this to me. And um, I love the little flowers in it that are going to match perfectly. And um, I just really love the vintage color and feel of this. And then I'll cut a thinner strip of this same lace to go around the neck of the bottle. And then I'm gonna add some stenciling uh, to this. And I'm gonna use a French stencil that I will add in the description. And, um, and instead of stenciling that with paint, uh, if you watch me long, you, you know that I love to use ink 
uh, to stencil with. So, uh, mistake on this one. Uh, I grabbed a makeup brush that apparently I hadn't cleaned. I had washed it out with soap and water. Uh, but um, the only way to really clean these brushes after you use the st stays on ink is to um, is to use alcohol. And apparently this one didn't get alcohol. Uh, I turns out I like the color that I got that those two colors blended together made. But as you can see, I've messed up my uh, my ink. So I'll just have to let this b color be a little bit off. And uh, once I'm finished with this, I'll take some alcohol on a paper towel and just kind of clean up some of that top. But um, I, I'm not as careful as I should be a lot of times. I get in a hurry. And while this worked on this project, uh, I wouldn't have done it knowing that I would uh, mess up my ink pad. But as many of you know, I'm not a perfectionist and uh, I, I do get in a hurry more often than not. And, uh, and then because of that, um, I don't take as good of care of my materials as I really should be. So uh, this ink, or ink at all, does really well with these small stencils like this, with the real detailed stencils. And um, you couldn't get this kind of detail, I don't think, out of paint. So I always make sure when I'm at the Dollar Tree and pick up plenty of these little brushes. I actually ordered my first ones from Amazon. And when you consider this, how many are in a set, it's probably a little bit better value even to buy them from Amazon. Uh, but, you know, it's easy for me to just pick up a few while I'm at the Dollar Tree when they have those in. Now, they should probably put these in the craft section, but they do, they're not in the craft section. They are in the makeup section. So, as you can see, I'm just gluing just that scalloped edge around uh, this image. And that will obviously make this the front of the bottle. And my first piece wasn't as long as I needed it to be, so I had to piece this. But when it comes to doilies like this, it's very easy to piece them where you won't see where one ends and the other begins. So once I got uh, this pieced and um, trimmed out around that um, front, then uh, there were some little pieces of the flowers that were left over and I just kind of placed those randomly around that area. Now there's a little area on this where that extra green is there that I felt like was too bold for this so I wanted to get rid of that and the way I did that was just pounced some of that textured paint over it and so that's a, an easy way to um, to cover up any little areas that you you're not real happy with. And again, that's just too much green, I feel like, so it was very easy to fix. And then once I get done with it, I'm going to be putting a clear coat over all of it, so uh, any difference in the finish will be hidden. So I poured some re resin molds, and they're going to be, I'm going to be using some of these on a project uh, later in this video. But this was one of the flowers that just has so much depth in it that I was able to make a stopper out of it. So what I did was I just filled it almost to the very top and then I just kind of stuck that, the um, cork in it and that makes a good little bottle stopper. You don't have to glue that on because you kind of pressed it down into that resin bottle stopper. And I'm going to attach this little set of flowers. Uh, it's actually a set of roses and there's four or five of them and they are so so detailed. And if you've never poured resin you just uh, mix half 
of the resin and half of the hardener and uh, or you mix them half and half and you stir them together really well and then you start pouring them and when you're pouring you want to make sure that after you get that stirred well that you very carefully but quickly pour these because they will set up so fast. Uh, it says 10 minutes. Sometimes it's much quicker than that. Sometimes it takes the whole quick, uh, the whole 10 minutes. But, uh, but very often I will pour it, and and before I can get everything poured, you'll see all the white that is hardening. And now there is how I did that. Uh, the uh, mold. And I messed up on this one because I didn't wait on it to set up. I should have waited till it started to turn white and then set that in there and it would have it would have worked much better. But as you can see it kind of leans. I was able to fix it as it started to dry. But the best thing to do is wait on it to start to get cloudy um, because that means it's it's starting to set up. But I started out using the amazing casting resin that my friend Myra told me about, and I absolutely love it. Uh, but I wanted to buy it in bulk because I would much rather pour these molds than use clay. And some items you have to use clay on because uh, you want it to uh, form to your item. But anytime that I'm working with something that's flat, I just have these made up a lot of times ahead and add them on and they're very strong. You don't have to worry about breakage when it comes to these resin molds. Now here I am uh, painting this pink on here and this is a mixed pink. I think I mixed um, soft pink and uh, buttercream I th think is what I mixed here uh, to get this color. But I'm just kind of painting that on and uh, and you have to really pounce it down in all that detail because it's hard to see here but there's so much detail in that flower and uh, so much that i don't want to hide that by painting it so what i'm going to do is once this dries i'm going to take just a little bit of van dyke brown glaze and work it down in there now i don't want to get too much down in there because there's too much room there for it to pull up and i don't want it to be really brown so i just very carefully dabs some in almost dry brushing it down in there and then wiping it off as you can see that makes such a good little stopper for a bottle you could also use this as a drawer pull uh, just by attaching a screw down in it and I've done that before but there is what it looks like finished and as you can see I used the same color there that I have on my little birdhouse and now I want to do a shabby chic pumpkin and I had this one that I had bought at an estate sale I got several pumpkins and uh, I love this color, but I want this to go with my vignette. I want this one very shabby chic. So uh, I'm just painting this in that same color of pink. And I just did one coat and didn't even worry about full coverage. I just want it to be mostly covered because I'm going to be covering this one with some lace. And uh, I just want to see some of that pink come through the lace. And once my paint dries, I want to take off that stem. While I like the stem, and I may use it on another pumpkin, it's not what I wanted for this one. I had something else in mind for this. Because this is a very good quality pumpkin, it was a little bit difficult to get out. And I'm not going to be having the hole in the top that I would like to have had uh, to cover this with fabric so i have to cut that out so i just used a serrated knife and just cut a hole in the center and also because this was good quality it was solid uh, where a lot of the the more cheap the cheaper ones are hollow in the center this was not so i just kind of had to carve some of that out so i had room uh, to tuck my fabric in 
So I cut a large enough piece of this lace that I could kind of tuck it down in the center all the way around. And because this was a little bit thicker lace, you, it's a little bit tougher to work with. If you're using a thin, stretchy lace, it's a lot easier to wrap. Uh, but this is what I had, so I wanted to make it work, and I just kind of carefully tucked it around uh, a little bit at a time until I got a neat enough finish. Just make sure that you cut the excess that you're not going to need, because the more that you're working with, the harder it is going to be to tuck in. So once I got this tucked in, and I neatened it up as much as it needed it, then uh, I will, it, one thing that will help it hold even further is to add the stem. And for this stem, I wanted to use something a little bit different. So I found a wooden knob that I think goes at the top of a post. I don't know how I ended up with it, but I had this in my stash. So I'm going to paint this in the color Buttercream. And I give this two coats of the color Buttercream, and then once it dries well, uh, then I'm going to attach it to the top of the stem, or of the pumpkin. And this will be my pumpkin stem. But I also wanted a base for this, so I had an old candle um, riser that uh, was just a metal finish, and I painted two coats of Buttercream on it also. And then I took some of my gold gilding wax and just used my finger to rub it over all the detail on this little riser. So I just rubbed it everywhere that I felt like would grab uh, some of that um, gilding. And I did that all over the candlestick. And then I rubbed a little gilding around the... Um, the stem of the pumpkin because I felt like that needed I, I needed to continue that gold on up to the top of my project and if you've never worked with this gilding wax it works so well and you can use a brush if you want most of the time I find that just using my finger works well and uh, this is washable so if you get any on you even when i get it in my nails it with some soap and water it comes out pretty good so uh, i don't worry with using a brush most of the time on this and i like the subtle look of just adding the gilding versus painting just the solid gold i don't want full coverage here at all and I didn't worry about full coverage on the top of that riser either because I'm going to be gluing my pumpkin on so that's not ever going to show. So I just attached that stem with some hot glue and just held it long enough to make sure that it was dry well. And that makes such a neat little stem for my pumpkin. And now that stem is going to match my, my candle riser and uh, it's going to make it all go together well. And then I poured several of my resin rose molds uh, because I want to embellish the top of this with different styles of those roses. So again, you just mix one part of the part A and one part of part B and stir it well but you want to move pretty quickly because um, you have 10 minutes tops and um, you want to pour it very carefully but as quickly as you can do it carefully if that makes sense and you always want to make sure you have some extra molds on hand so that you can pour what you have left in your cup in without wasting it. Now, if you start pouring a mold and you only get partially through that one mold, uh, then it's okay to uh, go ahead and pour it because you can always add. And as you can see, these are setting up so quickly. Now, I have fast forwarded this two times the speed but you can still see it's setting up very, very quickly. 
And here are some molds that I already had done, so I'm just kind of picking out the roses that I already had poured. And I also pulled out some leaves that I had poured ahead of time and actually poured a few more of those. But as you can see, you get so much detail out of these roses and they are so strong, so they're gonna work on so many projects. The only thing is it needs to be a flat project or something very flexible like this uh, where I can glue it to the fabric. And you don't have to use cornstarch when you're using resin like you have to with the clay. So once I have enough of these poured, then I just start hot gluing them around the stem. And I'm just kind of placing them where I feel like they'll look good and I place the leaf every now and then. So I'm just kind of building it as I go and I can always pour mold, more molds if I need a different one, but I started with plenty so I didn't run out. And um, again, I'm just kind of gluing it around the stem. Now these, uh, I forgot to mention that although they are already kind of an off-white when you pour them, uh, different types of resin will have just a little bit different um, color of white uh, so and I, I wasn't real crazy about the color of white so um, so I just painted all of these in the color buttercream and then once I painted them uh, then I took some of the gilding and went just very lightly over all of, of the flowers and leaves and I thought that that's what all that I was going to do and then I decided that I wanted to add some of the soft pink and green so uh, I should have waited on the gilding wax till the end it still worked out but I end up dry brushing some of that soft pink over the roses and some soft green over the leaves and uh, that was um, that ended up giving it enough color and then that gold gilding still showed enough that I was happy with it and didn't have to add more. But if you like this look um, of all the neutrals like this, then um, I think a lot of people might even prefer it like this. I just was trying to make this vignette go together better, so I felt like my roses needed some color. So again, I just dry brushed uh, that over the top of the roses and didn't worry about full coverage. I just wanted just a little bit of color. As you can see, dry brushing that color on really gave this a softer, more feminine look. And then I just tied some sheer fabric around the top and some lace and, uh, and then added a hang tag. So to make my hang tag, I just used a piece of white cardstock and I stamped with pink some script as a background and just antiqued around the edges with my distress ink. And then this little piece of, of uh, a tag here with the flower on it, I printed that out from the graphics fairy. And that was completely free, so, um, and the website is called The Graphics Fairy, and they have lots of clip art that you have to pay monthly for, but I don't ever pay a monthly charge, and I use so much of the clip art, and it, it just works so well for hang tags and things like that. Now, I'm lay, layering some lace behind it and uh, just adding some different layers, and there's no really rhyme or reason for this. Uh, I just feel like the more layers that you add, the better it looks, especially when it comes to uh, shabby chic. And here I'm just taking a strip of that fabric that I just torn into strips. It's just a sheer, almost a sheer fabric that I just tore into strips. And now I am hot gluing, and as I hot glue, I just kind of pinch that to gather it and it just gives it a really soft uh, look. And I like to add that to my hang tags. And now I'm just gonna add a few little buttons and I like to work mostly with white buttons because I feel like they, 
they keep the soft look. I don't like a whole lot of contrast with buttons. And then I'm just going to punch a hole in the top and tie on a strip of fabric. And that's just a really quick, shabby, chic tag that will look really good with my pumpkin. But don't let tags intimidate you because they're so easy to do. And you can just throw things together. And honestly, I think that when you throw them together, you get an even better look. So... Uh, if you're not happy with how it looks, sometimes uh, all you need to do is just add more. And at some point, you'll get to where you're happy with it, most likely. And there is what it looks like finished. And now my next item and my last item, I'm going to start with a little silver plated platter. And I painted it in the same color of, uh, of pink, the mixed pink that I did. And uh, I'm just showing you here, this still has the sticker on the back. Um, it, it's not real, but it is an older piece. And many times when I'm working with silver plate, I like to leave the back in that silver plate i just kind of like to look at that back and see that it's silver plate it's just kind of an odd fetish i guess that i have but um but i'm just kind of careful when i'm painting around the edges that i don't get any on that back but i'm doing two coats of this pink and i let that dry well and then i paint just the inside in the color buttercream and I have to do two coats on that, and I just have to use a small brush to trim out around that uh, outer edge. And the good thing about this one is it has a very distinct line there, so it's very easy to know where to trim that out to. So I just very carefully trim that out, and I end up having to put two coats of the Color Better Cream. And once I get two coats on that and let it dry, then I'm going to be adding a stencil. And the stencil that I'm using, I will add that in the description. And this is a large uh, furniture stencil, actually, that I'm just going to use a small part of. So all I want uh, is the little design here and then the little part that says flower market. And I'm just going to stencil that on with some gray ink. Now, I always say when you buy these large molds like this, or these large stencils, uh, you're not limited to just large pieces that you can use it on. You can use small parts of the stencil. And um, I got a little bit of bleed uh, on the top where I, um, I got off the stencil somewhat. And I'm not worried about that because I'm using some more of these resin molds that I did. And I'm going to place those on the top. And I'm just going to glue those on with some Gorilla Glue. And then also glue a couple of leaves uh, around the edges. And I'm going to do the same thing. I painted these uh, in this pink color. Uh, but I'm just going to dry brush some of the green over the leaves. And then again, once all this is glued on, then I'm going to finish this off with a clear spray. And I think I just used Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Finish. And then after I had already sprayed this with a clear coat, uh, then I just took some of my white wax and just concentrated that just around the edges so that just a little bit of that white would settle into this detail and make it pop better. And once I went all the way around with this and got enough of that detail showing the way I wanted it to, then I just took uh, my drill and I drilled a couple of holes in the top and then threaded some uh, fabric, sheer fabric, the same sheer fabric that I used on the pumpkin. And I threaded it through to the back and tied a knot in the back of each side and that made my hanger and that made a pretty simple uh, little wall hanging 
and I could see this one in a little girl's room or in a shabby chic bathroom. I think this one turned out really sweet. And don't forget your Christmas hang tags. If you want to participate in that, I will add my address in the description so that you can make a Christmas hang tag to uh, decorate one of my Christmas trees with. And as I mentioned, I got a couple of hang tags in the mail, just regular hang tags to hang on my hang tag wall. So I'm gonna show those. And this is the first one, and both of these are from Jacqueline Morris in Al New Albany, Indiana. And this is her beautiful hang tags, and I love uh, all the shabby roses that she put on it. This one is absolutely my style. She incorporated buttons and a cross, and these have scripture on them. So she did so much hard work on these. I'm just so uh, so appreciative that she sent them to me because I think I would want to keep these if I were her. So that's the front, and then here is the back, and the back is also very beautiful. Uh, and she signed it, and she has really pretty handwriting. Uh, a lot of times when someone is really artistic, uh, that comes out in their handwriting. So here is um, here is the second one, and I love these peachy colors. Uh, again, the shabby roses and um, and her beautiful handwriting on the back. And again, I love the way she trimmed out around the outer edge. It was so good to get hang tags again. And again, I will be waiting on some Christmas ones uh, so that I will have plenty. To decorate a Christmas tree with. I think that will make a very pretty tree. And again, I will be putting um, my address in the description so that uh, you guys will know where to send the hang tags to. I also wanted to mention that I'm trying still to do better with my links. So I'm going to start trying to add some pictures where a picture is available so it will be a lot more obvious uh, the item that you're looking for. So I'll still include those links, but there, there will be a picture with most of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.